This is the cheapest M2 Mac Mini, and this is the cheapest M2 Pro Mac Mini. And in this video, we're going to unbox them, set them up, do some comparisons and benchmarks, and then finally answer the question, is this really the best Mac for the money? And is the M2 Pro worth more than double the price of the M2? All right, so let's start with the $600 M2 Mac Mini. So this has an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU versus eight core on the M1 Mini, along with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. And if you look closely on the back of the box, you will see it says 2022. So pretty funny that confirms the rumors that this was supposed to be released at the end of last year versus January 2023. All right, so let's take off the pool tabs here. Now silver is the only color that the Mac mini comes in. I do wish there was a black version like a matte black, but we do only have the silver. So you can see we do have some black accents around though. So here is the back. You can see our IO right here. We do only have two Thunderbolt ports right there, which we do have more on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, which we'll get to in a minute. We have our HDMI, we have our two USB A's, we have our headphone jack, we have our power, and we have our Ethernet. And then let's go ahead and take this bottom sticker off right here. Very satisfying. And we can see the Mac Mini ingrained in the bottom here. Also in the box, we have our pamphlet, which does come with one large Apple sticker. You can see it is a silver Apple sticker. And then we have our black power cable, which is not braided. It is just more of like a, you know, rubbery feel kind of like on the iPhone. So you're not getting that premium quality with that power cord as expected for a base model $600 Mac. And then now let's unbox the M2 Pro Mac Mini, which is $1299. So 600 versus 1300. Meanwhile, we have a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, along with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. And I was not able to tell a difference in the weight of just the box, but that's because there's only a 0.2 pound difference. So the M2 mini weighs 2.6 pounds. The M2 pro weighs 2.8 pounds. So let's take these peel tabs off right here and unbox the pretty much identical. Actually, it is the identical Mac mini. This box was easier to open for some reason, but this is going to be exactly the same, except for we do have more IO on the back, like I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and take this back off so you guys can see that difference right away. Very satisfying. Let's take the bottom off as well. The best part about unboxing Mac products or any Apple product really. And then also in the box, we have that same black cable with the same material. And we also have the same color Apple sticker. So another silver Apple sticker, although I do wish it was black for getting the pro version. So here's where you can see the biggest difference in the M2 Mac mini and the M2 pro Mac mini. So we have two Thunderbolt four ports on the M2 and we have four Thunderbolt four ports on the M2 pro. Mac mini. We also have that HDMI right there, which there is a difference in the HDMI as well. So HDMI 2.1 on the pro HDMI 2.0 on the regular M2 mini. So that's going to give you a refresh rate of 4k 240 Hertz on the pro versus 4k 60 Hertz on the regular M2. And that HDMI 2.1 port also allows you to connect an 8k monitor at 60 Hertz. And then we have our gigabit ethernet port. You can add a 10 10 gigabit ethernet port for an extra $100, but I just chose regular gigabit on both. Now we don't have an SD card slot. That is my biggest, you know, drawback with the M2 Mac mini. I really wish we were able to get an SD card slot. The Mac studio has it, you know, the MacBooks have it, but the Mac mini still does not have an SD card slot. Meanwhile, we do have Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E support on both the M2 and M2 Pro. Mac minis, which is nice. So as far as the overall build quality and overall design, it's the exact same as the M1 Mac mini. Actually, the M2 Mac mini weighs the exact same as well. So pretty much everything is the same, but the M2 Pro Mac mini is slightly heavier again at 2.8 pounds, and it's going to have probably better cooling since it is an additional 0.2 pounds heavier. I would imagine the thermals are better along with those extra ports. So we'll have to do some testing on that. But the reality is you're never going to be picking this up. So the weight really doesn't matter. All right. So now what we're going to do is boot up and set up both Mac minis. I'm going to connect both of them to my studio display. All right, so we're plugged in. Let's go ahead and boot up the Mac mini. So we're just going to press on the power button 
and you can hear the boot up sound. And keep in mind that even the base model M2 Mac Mini can support up to two 6K displays. Meanwhile, the M2 Pro Mac Mini can support three displays, two 6K and one 4K. And as far as the quality and refresh rate, we have 4K 60 Hertz on the M2 Mini and 4K 240 Hertz on the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my wireless keyboard and my Magic Trackpad with my USB-C to Lightning cable. Keep in mind, none of this comes with the Mac Mini. You're only getting the Mac Mini. Even the Thunderbolt 4 you know, cable does not come with it, so you will need to grab that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and select our language as English. We have our accessibility settings. I love that Apple puts this up front and center pretty much right once you start setting this up. We're gonna do not now. We're gonna connect to Wi-Fi. Now, while we're waiting on that, I do wanna mention that the Mac Mini does have a speaker built in, although not a very good one, so I would recommend having a display with a speaker because the speaker is not gonna sound great, especially when playing music on the Mac Mini itself. But as far as that headphone jack goes, we do have support for high impedance headphones. So if you do have some higher quality headphones, you will be able to get that quality out of them through the Mac Mini. And then that HDMI port on the back, even the 2.0 version has support for multi-channel audio outputs. All right, so we do get presented with a software update on day one, Mac OS 13.2. We're not gonna do that for now. We're just gonna go ahead and do update later. All right, so I accidentally clicked on continue for the software update. So we're just gonna switch from the M2 Mac Mini to the M2 Pro Mac Mini so I can skip this long process. However, if you're setting yours up, I would recommend going ahead and doing that update upon setup. All right, so here's the M2 Pro Mac Mini. Let's go ahead and boot this one up. See if there's any difference at all in the boot up. I doubt there is going to be though. Nope, no difference in the boot up speeds, but we are going to go ahead and reconnect our keyboard and our magic trackpad to this new Mac mini. All right, now let's make sure we click on update later. So last time, you know, I clicked on that, but I went back and then it made me click on continue. So we're going to skip that for now. So we're going to go to data and privacy here. It tells us about our data and privacy. We're going to just tap on continue. And then we have our migration assistant. So if you have information on a previous Mac or Windows PC, if you're you know upgrading to this Mac mini, this is where you would go ahead and transfer all of your data over. You also have the option to do a time machine backup as well. So we're just gonna click on not now. Then you wanna go ahead and sign in with your Apple ID. And then here's where you set up your computer account. So you set your account name, that's gonna be the name of your home folder. I would recommend just doing your first name, not your last name. You would put your full name in the full name section right there and then select a password. You may have to enter this if your you know fingerprint doesn't work or for other scenarios. And then you have the toggle for allow my Apple ID to reset this password. I would recommend having that turned on just in case. And then we have some settings that we can customize, although I would recommend just keeping all of these as the default. So you can see we have screen time, location services, device analytics, all things like that. We can probably change these once we actually get into the Mac. I think it's fine just leaving these as B for now. Tap on continue. And then we have file vault disk encryption. So you have two toggles to turn on fire vault disk encryption and allow my iCloud account to unlock my disk. I would highly recommend keeping these turned on and then click on continue. And then this is where we set up touch ID if you do have a keyboard with a touch ID sensor. I do, so we're gonna click on continue and we're gonna go ahead and place our fingerprint right here. Now it does say to double press the power button. I think this is new. To set up Touch ID on your Mac, on your Magic Keyboard, double press the power button on your Mac to ensure secure connection. Interesting. I don't think I remember that from the first one. So we're gonna double press right there. We're gonna go ahead and place our first finger. I will do more of these later, but I'm just gonna do my right index finger for now. And then we have Apple Pay. We're gonna use our fingerprint to confirm Apple Pay purchases. I love that feature with this keyboard. And here we go, we are now on our Mac Mini. All right, so I've since updated both machines to the latest Mac OS 12.3. That way we have a level playing field and everything is fair. So I did a fresh round of benchmarks, and for the Blackmagic disk speed test, I did notice that the base M2 Mac Mini scored much lower than I was hoping. So it topped out at just under 1500 megabytes a second on the write speed, and a little over 1500 on the read speeds. So right away, I can already suggest to you guys that if you're looking to buy one of these, don't buy the base model. I mean, at the bare minimum, upgrade that SSD to 512 or even higher. I believe that these scores are even lower than what we got on the M1 Mac Mini, which is kind of disappointing. But on the M2 Pro version, where we have that 512 gigabyte SSD as the base model, the write speeds varied, but most of the time it scored around 2,200 to 2,300. And for the read speeds, we got just over 2,000 pretty much every time as well. So a big difference in read and write speeds 
which is basically what is going to be affecting like your everyday usage. Pretty much everything you do does rely on that disk speed. I also ran a Geekbench 5 test on the M2 Mac Mini, the base model, and we scored a 1925 on the single core and an 8646 on the multi-core. Meanwhile, the M2 Pro Mac Mini got a 1941 on the single core and 11401 on the multi-core. And then the final benchmark I ran was a Cinebench R23 test. And on the single core for the M2 Mac Mini, we scored a 1637 and the multi-core was an 8668 with an MP ratio of 5.3. And then on the M2 Pro version, we scored a 1635 on the single core, so slightly lower than the M2 Mini, which was kind of surprising to me. But on the multi-core, we made up for it with an 11,579, a huge jump from the single core. And that's a 7.08 on the MP ratio, the difference between the single core and multi-core. And then the final overall test I did to compare these machines was a Final Cut Pro test. So I added in about a 30 minute video that is in 4K H.264. I added some effects, some color corrections and things like that on these clips as well. And the import speeds were about the same on both. I was kind of surprised there right away. However, when skimming through that 4K clip on the timeline, and this is a clip from my Sony a7 IV, by the way. I got a beach ball on the M2 Mac Mini multiple times and quite a bit of stutter. So the M2 Pro handled the 30 minute clip with ease and didn't freeze up one time. I didn't get the beach ball one time when going through the timeline on that machine. So that was impressive. And that multi-core, you know, really showed right there. So the export times, the M2 Mac Mini scored a 24-24. So it exported that clip, that 30 minute 4K clip in about 24 minutes, 24 and a half minutes. The M2 Pro Mac Mini exported that same video in about 18 and a half minutes. So a nice difference difference there in video export times. Okay, so now what are my final thoughts? Well, first off, the base model, it's so appealing with that 599 price tag, but the reality is 256 gigabytes of storage not only is just not enough for most people, but you're also getting a much slower speed than if you were to even have the M1 Mac Mini from years ago. So for that reason alone, I would say skip the base model M2 Mac Mini, even though it sounds like a great bargain, pay the extra $200 to get the 512 gigabyte SSD because you're gonna get more than just extra storage. You're gonna have faster speeds overall on your Mac Mini. I would say that that M2 Mac Mini with the upgraded SSD is going to be sufficient enough for most people. Now, if you're a creative, if you export videos, if you you know edit videos, if you edit photos, if you do any type of intensive coding, anything like that, I would say to buy the M2 Pro base model. You get the same 10 core CPU, the same 16 core GPU as the M2 Pro, 14 inch MacBook Pro, but for $700 less. You also get 16 gigs of RAM and that 512 gigabyte SSD as the base model. Now you can spec up the M2 Pro, but at that rate, you're basically getting into Mac Studio territory. And I would just say to get a Mac Studio if you're even thinking about you know, upgrading the M2 Pro because I think the base model was sufficient enough. But if you do need more, you know, the Mac Studio with more ports, better cooling, and you know, better speeds overall, I think would be the better option. But you know, the M2 Pro is solid. It's gonna be solid for your video editing needs, your photo editing needs, your coding, your 3D rendering, all of that. Now keep in mind, this is just my overall first impressions, my overall first look at the M2 Mac Mini. So things could change and things probably will change in the future. So if you wanna see you know, updated reviews on these M2 Mac Minis, let me know in a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for more Mac coverage coming soon. But anyways guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,